Hello everyone, how are you? Uh, this is the fundamental course to give you a clarity about the business uh, information, about all uh, details that you want to hear about in order to uh, shift your career or to enhance the knowledge that you have or upgrade the skills that uh, already all of you have it. Uh, the good point today that we will give you, inshallah, most recent information and knowledge-based um, uh, techniques, activities, tasks that will help you to work in your work environment, in your life, in your business, whatever your domain, uh, regardless your domain, regardless your titles. Uh, actually, this certificate will help you a lot in your um, uh, career path. Let me start for our discussion today, Introduction to Business Analysis and PA Professional, Business Analysis Planning and Monitoring. I will give you how to plan your activities, how you plan your business information and all other tasks related to the business analysis inside your organization, your initiative, your project, whatever, regardless the type of the initiative that you work for. Elicitation and collaboration, how we can sit with the stakeholders, how we can collect the requirement, gather requirements, set uh, expectations, and share it with all other stakeholders. Also, we need to understand how the requirements life cycle can be managed because mostly we miss that in our organization. So we need to, uh, to care about this point. Then we'll talk about how the requirement analysis, we can design it and how we can uh, put it inside the documents and we can share it with all other stakeholders. Finally, which is great for all of you, we have something called techniques. Uh, you will work in business analysis domain or in any domain. This will help you a lot actually because it's talked about many, many techniques that you can use it inside your work, even in your life. Uh, I will open the discussion. So anyone uh, has any question, you can share it directly with us. Our team uh, will work uh, directly to answer your question. And also we can get all of the question and we can answer it and share it again with all of you. Uh, the point here that in case um, uh, I will open a discussion or open the questions, you can put it anytime, but maybe after the first hour, I can start answering the question, then we'll go again with the discussion, then answer a question again, and so on. So uh, almost we have three times uh, uh, to answer the questions. And also we'll take a break in between because I know maybe you need a coffee or a cup of coffee or a cup of tea at heaven. So we'll give you a break in between after uh, uh, hour and a half, something like that, in order to uh, recover yourself, get more energy to start your week tomorrow. Um, so please, if you have any question, please uh, uh, put it in the chat. Uh, you have something called the Q&A. You can share your questions there and we can uh, later uh, take it and answer it. For those who uh, whom want they or they want to start their career path as a, as a business analyst, they can uh, start with entry level, which is a certified business analysis entry level. Then he can go or she can go directly to the uh, CCPA or CPAP directly, which is a certified professional uh, business analyst professional. It based in your situation. If you work more than four years, you can go directly after ECPA, which we will talk about it today. You can go directly to CPAP. This is my uh, suggestion for all of you. But you, as you can see, uh, there is uh, or there are four certificates starting from ECPA, CCPA, CPAP, CPA, TL. This is the the last level which need not a certificate, not an exam, it need from you something called like an, a long experience, something you uh, do it uh, or did it before for the, your community, your country, and so on in the business analysis field. So today we'll talk about this part, which is ECPA, Entry Level uh, Certified Business Analyst. Actually, if we will talk about International Institute of Business Analysts, it founded in 2003, located in Canada, dedicated for this field only. Yes, maybe you heard before about other certificates related to the business analyst, but this is the most recognized one. Uh, most recognized one based in many research, based in our experience, based as I'm trying all the time to search uh, uh, for business analysts to hire them. Most of the time, 
I just put ECPL or CPAP in the LinkedIn in order to search uh, for those uh, business analysts. So this is how it affects your career path. The exam, it will be easy. Uh, no worries about the exam. It's uh, just only 60 minutes, 15 questions, uh, and the passing criteria is 60%. So yeah, it's a straightforward exam, multiple choices, questions. So no worries about that. Uh, I'm encouraging all people to go there and take the exam directly because really that exam easy uh, and you can put your certificate in your account in LinkedIn or in your CV. So really it will make a huge difference for you. Um, Actually, this is just uh, uh, general information about the exam itself, if you want to get the certificate that comes from International Institute of Business Analysts. But again, for today class or webinar, you will take um, a certificate from PECA. And again, you can get uh, the discount if you use the promo code to get the uh, training courses, uh, regardless the type of the training. So let's talk today or start with introduction to the business analysis and be a professional. Yeah, in this course actually, or in our webinar today, we need to talk about what the meaning of PAPOC. Maybe you hear something PAMPOC related to the project managers, but as a business analyst, we have something called PAPOC, business analyst body of knowledge. Something if you hear about PAMPOC, which is related to project managers, maybe you will um, uh, just match between both. What is the business analyst and what is the business analysis? What's the difference between both? what is the six knowledge areas related to the PAPOC? Because yes, we have something called business analysis body of knowledge, but again, that POC include different knowledge areas that will help me to move on, to uh, satisfy my organization, to satisfy my government entity that I work for. Even if I, I own that business, I can make a huge success if I uh, follow that uh, or those knowledge areas. So today, inshallah, really you will find that difference. We have something called, uh, called PACCM, which is related to the core concept model. Uh, simply, it means that today, if I talk to you or talk to anyone working in IT domain, working in gas and petrol domain, working in finance domain, regardless of the domain that you work for, actually all people will understand you. And the good point for business analysts, why we have the, this core concept model. The good point, as a business analyst, you can for, work for any type of organization, for a private for sector or for government sector, semi-government sector, for different domains, finance, um, uh, let's say for municipalities, uh, for uh, learning uh, domain, whatever, regardless of the domain that you will work for, actually they need business analysts inside the organization. And actually we, we have different types of business analysts. Some business analysts work in strategy department, some business analysts work in IT department, other working in business architecture, other working with the top management um, uh, to put the mission and vision of the organization, and also the other others working with the business processes of the organization. Let's say one example that how today we let the customer submit their request and they will retrieve the value. Those just simply where the business analysts can work. Again, everywhere they need business analysts. And also we need to understand the difference between the requirements. All the time we hear about it, requirements, requirements, functional requirements, business requirements, stakeholder requirements. We need to know the differences between all of these types of requirements. And the good thing, what the difference between requirement and design? Maybe you will tell me, some of you will ask me directly, the design may be something that uh, I can see it on the screen. Okay, maybe others will uh, let uh, uh, or put something inside the documents related to design like a prototype. So we need to, to understand exactly what the meaning of design. It's just the colors or there is something behind the design. And what is the relation between redesign and requirement? Finally, we need to know exactly the skills needed and you need it. And you need to have that uh, uh, competences or let's say skills in order to succeed, in order to put um, new targets for you, like how to communicate, how to use um, uh, functions, how to use uh, computer softwares and those stuff. 
Yeah, they put it inside the PAPOC. Imagine that they put it inside the PAPOC and we have it today to discuss it and I can share it uh, with all of you. This is quickly where we will move today, inshallah. So if you have anything again, please share it over the questions. Okay. So later after one hour, something like that, we can discuss your questions. Okay. So again, what's the difference between the business analyst and the BA professional? So today, what's the difference between business analysts and business analysts? Okay, what the difference is uh, between business analysts and the business analysis? Okay, maybe directly it comes to your mind, you will tell me, okay, business analysis means the activities, the task, something like that, right? But no, stop here, there is something else. Okay, it's not like that. The business analysis, exactly, it's the practice to enable the change inside the organization by defining the need. The need, it's about the requirement. Today, I am the manager inside the organization. I ask my business analyst team, we need to enhance amazon.com website. So this is my need. So enabling that change based on this need by recommending solution. Okay, I will enhance the website for amazon.com that will deliver a value to our stakeholders, which is our customers. Basically, this is the business analysis. This is the core concept that we all the time we need to work for. So don't miss this point or forget this point in your life because actually we enable the change inside the organization by knowing the need and putting the recommending solution to deliver a value to our stakeholder. This is all about the business analyst, okay? The business analyst, who the person who will work on those needs or in enabling that change or whatever you will call it, okay? So please keep it in your mind. Again, maybe some of you will ask me, okay, my title is not a business analyst. I am a software engineer, but I actually I'm working as a business analyst. Yes, totally right. Maybe you will be digital transformation specialist, business analyst, a software engineer, uh, system analyst, uh, manager, product owner, product manager, whatever the title that you has. Finally, if you did activities or tasks related to the business analyst, this is the, the, the time that we can call those activities comes under the business analyst activities and you can call yourself or you can mention that you are worked under a business analyst rule, okay? So regardless the job title or organizational rule, you need to, 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 to put in your mind that, that point, okay? Keep it in your mind all the time because really this will make a difference, okay? Now, this is actually many other different uh, job titles, as you can see on the screen, business architect, system analyst, data analyst, enterprise analyst, product manager, owner, system analyst, requirement engineer, management consultant, whatever. All, all people could work under the business analyst activities. Finally, you need to deliver a value. If you deliver a value, then we can call you as a business analyst. We'll go back again to the knowledge area. You heard me when I just mentioned knowledge area inside the PAPOC. The book simply, it's a book that includes different knowledge area because they call it knowledge area. Inside a knowledge, each knowledge area, there is, or there are different tasks. The, 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 the tasks and the knowledge areas, all of them will cover all activities that any business analyst did, okay? So anytime, okay? You can open the, this presentation or the PAPOC itself, you can find actually the, the needed task that you need. I'll give you an example. When the initiative starts, you need to set your stakeholder. You need to put the list of the stakeholder. You need to know exactly the attitude of the stakeholders. This is how the business work, okay? Example, today within COVID-19, before two years, when it started, okay, on that time, they, in different organizations, they start shift their businesses, okay? Because there is lockdown, many, many, many um, uh, organizations, they suffer from that one and the other one take the benefit. Amazon, Talabat, and other online applications or apps, they put something called supermarket or something like that uh, to, to uh, put the items that the people need inside the country, right? So this is 
called opportunity, right? So this one need from the business analyst to work on that, okay, initiative to bring it in real. They need to study it, analyze it, see who, who's the stakeholder, the customers, uh, the benefit of that initiative, the, the, the return on the investment, many things need to be studied. Okay, maybe you will ask me if I'm the only BA inside the organization, I can did everything. Yes, you can do everything, okay, on that manner. But again, there are many people will work with you to finalize your tasks. So inside the book, we, we actually have six knowledge areas. Okay, as you can see on the screen, business analysis, planning and monitoring, how we can plan our business analysis activities, the name of the stakeholders, the time to work on my activities, the, the approach that I will follow, again, the performance of my team or myself, I need to put it and monitor it, then we will go with the other knowledge areas, we need to collect the requirement, we call it elicitation and collaboration. We need to sit with the stakeholder, collect the requirement, or maybe I will sit with the customer for the Amazon to understand from them what exactly their need. Maybe they need the same day delivery or something like that, especially for the home items. So something like that will give a value. Then we'll go with the requirement lifecycle management where I need to save my requirement, how I can give the development team or other team members access to that one. Then we'll go with the requirement analysis and design definition, how I can design my requirement. Today, if I, I tell you something, Yanni, if I start a project, let me just give you a little bit on this. Amazon.com, it's a website, right? Different links, you will have it here or different buttons. If we need to add a new button here, okay, it's, yeah, maybe you'll think it's simply they add supermarket and that's it. They call it supermarket, I think, okay? If they add this one, they need to do many things. They maybe partnership with other supermarkets, real supermarkets, okay, uh, for uh, supply chain to give them the items. So they need to design the website to put all of these items. They need to understand the validity of the item expiration date because you know maybe it's, just only one day, two days, depending on the product and the item. So someone need to analyze it. So first of all, you need to plan and to know exactly your stakeholders. Then you need to sit with your stakeholders and collect the requirement. Then you need to save your requirement somehow in area, let's say an Excel sheets or, or documents or something to share it with a development team or companies that will work on this website. Then you will design it. You will design the website, how it will look like. You will say in your document, I need a box here. When the customer click on it, we need to open this page. So this is the design and definition. Then you need to do two things. Solution evaluation, in case you will bring a ready-made solution, let's say Oracle, Microsoft, regardless the name of that product. So you need to put it. And we have the last knowledge area called strategy analysis, which is actually, you will not get it in this certificate, both of them, this one and this one, because really it comes after three years of experience, you can work on it. So strategy analysis, how to put the mission and vision of the organization, the future state and so on. Okay, but you need to understand for this certificate, no need to study this one, no need to study this one. So only for ECPA, Okay, for ECPA certificate, just only will take one, two, three, four knowledge areas. Actually, this yeah, is something in you, they remove it just only this year. Okay, so this actually good for you, for all of you to take the benefit and take the certificate actually based on it. So you'll have just only four knowledge areas. Okay, so this is good for you. Again, for each knowledge area, as I told you before, we have tasks, okay? So for planning, which is the first one here, this one, business analysis, a planning and monitoring, we have those tasks, okay, in orange color, okay? We have approach, we need to set the approach, we need to plan a stakeholder engagement a plan, the times that we will sit with the stakeholders, when, how, based on what, it will be online, face-to-face, -face. 
we need to plan for the governance. It means how I can govern the activity. Do I need to keep my business analyst team to work or stakeholders or development team work with the stakeholders without any control? Or I need, so you need to put it. Plan business analyst information management and identify performance improvement. Maybe my BA team, they cannot give me the full value. So I need to, to, to uh, make sure that they will give me the full support, the full quality, uh, and I can control everything around that. Even if you uh, only work on that project, you need to control yourself. And also for the others, as you can see, there is different task for each knowledge area and so on. Again, this one that I highlighted in yellow, it's out. No need to work on it. This one also out. So you'll have the remaining, which is not highlighted in yellow. All others, you need it for the exam. For the exam, those two removed, okay? Okay, great. Again, P-A-C-C-M. Can you put in the chat what the meaning of P-A-C-C-M? What do you think, team? P-A-C-C-M, Business Analysis Core Concept Model. Okay, that let anyone, yeah, great, great, Lujain. So that let anyone, yeah, great. Thank you all. I, I prefer to participate with me, really, it's good for all of you. Yeah, great, great. So it's core concept model, business analysis, core concept model. Today, if I have the same project with Amazon, if I ask you, please share it based on PACCM, you will let, okay, you need to put under each one of those the, the exact, okay, uh, description. So putting supermarket as a new uh, website link in the Amazon, how we can do it based on PACCM? Okay, what do you think? We can put under change that we need to add a new link, okay, called supermarket. This is the change itself. Why, what is the need for that change? What is the need? You need, let's say, to a year's customer life because of COVID-19, because of lockdown, whatever. So this is the need. The solution that you will bring, you need to add a partnership with different organizations, different companies, supermarkets, malls, whatever the, the, uh, the, the people that you will work for or companies that you will work with. Finally, you will put a solution that help those customers. So you'll put that description under solution. The stakeholders, yes, customers, let's say if you are working inside Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia people inside Saudi Arabia, if you are working in the Middle East, then you will say, okay, all customers inside the Middle East, based where your, uh, let's say, project or initiative exists. The value, the va final value, we will increase our, let's say, profit by adding a new product types, which people need, actually, okay? The context means that you need to put everything around the supermarket, if in case added in amazon.com, you need to put, let's say, description about Amazon. Then you will add a description about the new, let's say, uh, feature that you will add it on amazon.com website. This is simply what we need while we are working on PACCM. If I share this, yeah, if I share this one, which is PACCM in Arabic, yeah, uh, it's called Namudaj in Arabic. So this conceptual framework, if I share it, me, with you, with anyone inside the organization or outside the organization, he exactly knows what we need from that initiative, the supermarket initiative. I mean, while we add it because of COVID-19 on the different websites. So this is the point why we need something called PACCM, okay? So the knowledge areas, again, we have six knowledge areas, this one that I give it at the beginning. We have different, let's say, concepts or competences 
how you can communicate, interaction skills, communication skills, business knowledge, behavioral characteristics, and analytical thinking and the problem solving skills. And inside it, we have something called techniques like brainstorming session, uh, meetings, uh, webinars, whatever the things that you need, all of these things you can get it. And finally, this is the Papok. Everything inside the Papok, you will find it in this sketch, okay? Okay, we'll move to different key terms, okay. If I ask you, what is the business analyst? You will know, right? What is the business analyst? If you uh, focus with me at the beginning. What do you think? Anyone? The person who do the analysis task, looking to get a value, the practical part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so exactly enable the change, company to enable the change, the practice of business analyst, define gaps, yes. Define needs exactly, see the business from different angles. Yeah, we call it, by the way, Rasha, this is the perspective we call it. Yes, it's inside the PAPOC itself. In practice of enabling the change. Yes, exactly, exactly. So yeah, yeah, totally right, totally right. Putting a plan, working in the situation, enhancing a system, many things. You can put it inside the business analysis. Now, what is the business analysis information? You know, this is the person who will work in different tasks, right? BA. He will give you different documents. BRD document, SRS document, minutes of meeting. This is business requirement document, system requirement document, minutes of meeting, okay? Okay, so what is the business analysis information? Yeah, Shad, they will talk about the intersection between both. Reports, different, different documents. Okay. So we'll say, okay, today, by the way, we have documents, reports, minutes of meeting, minutes of meetings, uh, SRS document, PRD, and so on. Business analysis information, it's a set of information that comes from the BA. It's the output, your output as a BA. Okay. Yes, Junan, exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. So this is the point. Business analysis information means any input comes from the business analyst, like documents, minutes of meeting, all of these things that highlighted here comes under the business analysis information. Yeah. So business analysis information means any output comes from the business analyst. Okay. So exactly this is what we need. Now, the difference between design and requirement. All the time I, I told you, please, yani link between both design and need, because we are working to enable the, the organization change. So what is the difference between design and requirement or what both meaning for you? Requirement need, design solution, equal solution. Okay. Sometimes it may design, final solution requirements are the need of the clients. Fatima, exactly, yes. It's requirements equal value, yes. Okay, most of you, most of you, thank you all. Yeah, you just put exactly what I want. Take it like that, because really in your life, you will face that. Even if you will not work as a business analyst, you need to understand exactly what the companies um, uh, say in order or the meaning of uh, the words that they mention it for you inside the proposals, okay? 
The design is as you uh, consider as a usable representation of a solution and the requirement usable representation of a need. Today, let's say we have Ministry of Education, one of the department managers or directors, okay, he asked you, we need to enhance the learning system inside our country. This three words or this statements, we call it need. Okay, we call it need. So this need between the brackets, we can call, yes, what is your requirement? You will say my requirement to enhance the learning system inside the country. So the requirement is a usable representation of a need. Okay, keep it in your mind. Now, in case he asked you, okay, that I need to bring, let's say, X system, because I don't need to mention any systems, uh, real systems, okay. Let us put X as an example of one of the systems that will allow the students to take their certificates, grades, marks, whatever, okay, from that system. And we need dashboard, it will look like that. This is the dashboard for their grades and so on. So this one, we call it design. Okay. So the design, this one is a usable representation for what? For the solution. Okay. Because this one is considered as a solution. So you have two things, the design about the solution, requirements about a need, okay? We design the solution to satisfy the need or requirements. Yes, finally, you will satisfy the needs. The needs exactly called requirements, okay? Okay, what requirement versus how solution? Look, the requirement will be the need itself. When someone mentioned that I need to do one, two, three, this is called requirement or a need between the brackets, it's your need. Because you just mentioned, I need to have a system or has a system to do one, two, three, okay? So the solution that will come in order to fit this need, this we call it solution, which comes under design, okay? Yeah, so you have two things. You have design again, and you have a need, okay? Or solution, let's say. So let's say your manager inside the organization asked you, please, we need to enhance the learning management system, okay? So in this way, he asked you about something we call it need. When he mentioned three, four statements, like I need to do one, two, three, this is called need, okay? This one considered as a requirement. But in case he bring a solution, okay, this solution include different, let's say, buttons, grades, uh, dashboard, etc. And he asked you, please, this solution, we need it to enhance the learning management system. In this situation, this one, we will consider it as a design, okay? So the difference between, there is, it's not the opposite side or two different things comes in left side and right side, both comes together. The requirement, the usable representation of a need and the design usable representation of the solution. Finally, the solution will come to fit that need. Put it in your mind like that. It's not two different things. Both of them comes together, okay? Keep it like that. Both of them comes together. So you'll have a need, you'll have a solution. This solution will come to fit that need, to enhance the learning management system. Based on that, we can call this as a requirement and this is like a design, okay? About enterprise and organization, organization, independent group of people working under a single uh, management, 
or board of management toward common goal and objective. This is organization. But what is the enterprise? Bring different organization. They share different set of goals. Okay, this is organization one, organization two, organization three. This one, let's say working in, let's say like Amazon or like Apple. Apple, they have, let's say different tracks. This one worked, let's say in um, software development. This one worked in manufacturing new products like iPhone, tablets, whatever, iPad and so on. So this one hardware. And the other one work in autonomous car, cars. Okay, Apple car or iCar, whatever they call it. So this is, imagine that each one of those comes under different organization because really each one of those has different objective or value. So each one of those, we can consider it organization, okay? Organization three, organization two, organization one, okay? But because they comes under the same enterprise or the same brand called Apple, we can call it enterprise, okay? So the difference between enterprise and organization, organization give you different, let's say, or they give you one or different uh, objective, but finally the, the full organization will hit that target. But in case you, you have, or you has different organization, let's say one, two, three, each one different objective, then we can call it uh, enterprise. We, we have many organizational companies around the world like Apple, Google, uh, or Alphabet, they call it Meta now because Facebook, WhatsApp, and other different uh, application, Instagram, uh, Meta is another enterprise and so on. Okay, this is just an example, or uh, uh, you can yeah, you consider it under the enterprise. The risk and the plan, risk or plans, it just putting different activities. Let's say I need this activity today, this after one year, this is after two years, this is a plan. Risk after one year, do you know exactly what will happen this year number three? this year number two and this year number one. And you are here. Do you think the risk here will be similar to this year, will be similar to this year? And why? No, exactly, but why? One word, I need just only one word. Who mentioned that word? Uncertain, yeah, exactly, Hassan. Exactly, uncertainty, clarity, you can call it clarity. Unpredictable, yes, yes, exactly. Uncertainty is the key word that I need from all of you. You need to know that the uncertainty in this area will be more than this, will be more than this. So the clarity in the year number one will be more. The clarity in year number two will be mid, more than uh, or less than year number two, but still it's clarity and more clear than year number three. Year number three, okay, or the third year, we cannot, يعني, many of the requirements or how the solution will go with, how it will be represented, still we need the solution or not, I cannot judge that. So the clarity here in decreased, Uncertainty increased means more risk. So the risk will be increased, okay? The risk here will be low. So keep it in your mind all the time, risk connected to the word called uncertainty, okay? When the uncertainty increased, the risk increased. The funniest part, requirement classification. Did you hear about the requirements before? the word requirements or requirement in your proposals, in your RFPs, RFI, and so on. What do you think, team? I hope that the, the, the webinar open mic for all, so allow, allowing all of you to discuss with me directly. Yes, 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 exactly. Did you know that we have 
business requirement or four types of requirement business requirement stakeholder requirement solution requirement and finally transition requirement the four types or classification of the requirements we have four business stakeholder solution and finally transition requirement yeah exactly what about the functional Jay, thank you for this question yes it comes under solution here under solution we have both functional requirement and non-functional requirement okay you change achieve the vision yeah exactly exactly ahmed yeah exactly i will tell you something I will make it easy for you. Okay, so I'll give you something. Mm, I will go with the same example of Ministry of Education, let's say. Okay, Ministry of Education will go with this guy. Sorry about how he looked like, but I don't know. This is the head of Ministry of Education. Okay, he asked you the following. We need to enhance the learning system inside the country. Okay, this statement we can call it business requirement stakeholder requirement solution requirement or transition requirement and why poor business requirement business requirement all no it's not all and not solution and not a transition and not a stakeholder it's a business requirement okay i will give you why you need to understand first of all the hierarchy of the requirements. The requirement started from business requirement. The second level will be stakeholder requirement. Then it will be solution requirement. The last one called the transition requirement. For this one, we need to enhance the learning system inside the country. It's a high level statement. It's like a mission. I need to enhance the learning system. I need to enhance the healthcare system. I need to do something like, let's say the, the head of the uh, Ministry of Education or any other organization, they give you a direction that we need to enhance the learning management system. Did he or they give you details about it? Can you understand from this statement exactly what you need to do? Can you exactly step by step? Did you know as Tom or Muayyad or XYZ that what is the learning management, the existing learning management system to understand exactly what he need? No, it's not specified exactly because it's a high level. So this it's like objective, for him or them. So in this situation, we call this one business requirement. Most of the time, business requirements comes from the top management. Map it based on that. It's high level requirements. It's like objective, goals, something like that. So you need to consider it as a business requirement. The second step directly that you will start your work to do, you need to set with different directors inside Ministry of Education, okay, to understand the current learning management system, right? Or the learning system inside Ministry of Education. So the second level will call it stakeholder requirement. Example of a stakeholder requirement, they will work under this goal, okay? Which is we need to enhance learning management system. Maybe they will ask you, okay, we have today, okay, 12 grade or grades we need to make it 11 and the last one we need to merge it with 
let's say uh, universities of college or whatever okay based on what best they will give you start giving you many other information about enhancing the learning management system or learning system inside the country so this one they start give you step by step or requirement by requirement exactly mentioned what they need to do they will give you i need to remove let's say one grade put it inside universities and the remaining others we need to do x y z for it so they give you the clear requirement based on the business requirement so this one we call it stakeholder requirements and why it's called stakeholder because you need to sit with those stakeholders, department head, uh, employees, inside the uh, teachers, maybe you will sit with teachers, based on the type of the analysis that you will did. Can we take, yeah, we'll take before one hour. After seven minutes, we'll take a break, okay? So this one, we can consider it as okay stakeholder requirement because you will sit with those people and they will give you the stakeholder requirement now those requirements that you will get from those stakeholders you will start to work on it analyze it you will do your research in order to what to build your requirement document because you came to do your job you will get the requirements to remove one grade from schools and put it inside the university. Now your work to understand exactly or to analyze exactly, if you remove it, what is the impact, okay? And if you include it inside the university, what is the impact? This one we call it solution requirement because finally you need to put the grade there. So what is the impact? What is the effect? How it will look like? You need to put everything inside the document. And we call it functional and non-functional. Later, I will let you know what the difference. So this is the solution requirement. Finally, we have something called the transition requirement. If you remembered in your country, when they did mostly because the Ministry of Education in all countries, they did many changes for the learning management system. If you remember, most of the time they take portion of changes and they put it this year, the other portion, they put it the next year and third year and so on. They did not map all changes in one year. Let's say if they change the curriculum, they change it for the, uh, let's say grade one till grade six. The second year from grade six to grade, let's say nine and so on. Maybe the changes will take three years, four years. So this is why we call it a transition requirement because you will not move everything at one shot and put it there. This is look like that. But you'll ask me in all time, we need to have transition requirement, not all the time. You need to have portion of requirement this year and next year and so on. Maybe in other situation, you will take it one time, you will migrate the data and you will have everything changed in one time. Yes, exactly. This is why we can change. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the transformation. Yeah, it's all about transformation. This is why we call it a transition requirement. So we have requirement, business requirements, stakeholder requirements, the second level, the third level, solution requirements, and the last level called transition requirement based on strategy plan, 100%. You need to have that strategy plan because it's the umbrella that lets you know exactly when you will do this task and why exactly and what the list of the stakeholder that will help you based on that one we'll come back again so i will start with the questions is this career business analysis field suitable for engineering degree holder with experience in petrochemical plants yes for sure Actually, um, uh, the good point here that regardless the title, regardless where you uh, work, type of the organization, field, um, for any 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 situation, yes, you can um, uh, take the benefit of business analysis uh, entry level. Actually, it will give you the clarity how to start any initiative, regardless the type of that initiative, if it's an IT software, if it's a process, if it's uh, move your organization, 
create new ideas, uh, set a plan for your activities inside the organization, manage the team members, and so on. So yes, uh, for sure, uh, Tamer, uh, it will help you a lot. Uh, Hussam, how business analysis help HR operations? How business analysis helps manage facilities and shared services? Exactly. For HR operation, many times I put, um, uh, uh, yeah, still, but, but because I shared the questions, I don't know if you can see it, but I already uh, mentioned the question before the answer. So how the business analysis will uh, help the HR operation and manage facilities and share services for sure. For HR operations, uh, you can enhance the processes, you can uh, remove uh, extra steps from your processes, how you will hire new people, maybe you will uh, enhance the process, maybe you will add a system to enhance the process or by removing many activities or many steps. I mean, uh, for manage facilities and share services, even you put uh, the systems, you can select the systems. The solution evaluation is a good part to, um, to create or to choose the best uh, system for your organization or the services for share service, again, uh, which uh, related to um, uh, business analysis activities, you can, let's say, put how you will uh, receive the calls, how you receive the um, the issues, the problems, events from your customers, and how you can solve it based on different uh, processes or based how you can uh, collect and gather those requirements and you can uh, suggest or recommend a new solution for that one. Uh, Sultan, when apply for ACPA and choose to get POC, are we gonna to have it as a hard copy or soft copy? Yes, soft copy. But again, if you want the hard copy, you can ask for the hard copy. But for me, I prefer to have the soft copy all the time. You can print it out and you can put your notes. Uh, so yeah, I think for ECPA, the best choice is the soft copy. Uh, how can we distinguish between business analyst and the project management or business analysis and project man management? Both will work together. Again, the project manager will manage the project. The business analyst will manage the requirements. So each one of those will help the other one. You will give your activities for him. He will put it in his plan. Then he will follow up with you to see the requirements, the everything else around the requirements. Then he will share your results with the development team and you need to follow with the development team to see your uh, requirements uh, look like uh, or how it uh, implemented or whatever the situation. So yeah, both together will work to uh, get the final value. How to integrate project management and business analysis in a project? Wahid, this is the question from Wahid. Again, it's already uh, integrated. Uh, currently in my work, there is a project manager for each initiative and already I start my project or initiative even before it comes like a project because you know the project start after the business case approved and I will let you know about it today. So you need to know each project before it's started, there is a business case. After it's approved, then you will make this initiative as a project. Let's say one of the stakeholders will ask me to uh, enhance the process of HR. Then I need to prepare a business case. I put the plan, suggested the plan, the cost. I need to analyze if there is impact or not, and it will give a benefit or not. Sponsor, I need to put many things as inside the business um, uh, or business uh, uh, case. Based on that one, if it's approved, then we'll change it as a project. After a project, I need to get the requirement. I share it with the development team. The project manager will manage that activities between all team members. So it's already integrated. I am my student, sixth level. Do you recommend me to apply for ECPA exam? 100% sure. I recommend all of you, all of you to uh, uh, take the ECPA exam as soon as possible, okay? This is my recommendation. And again, there is a great benefit to take the promo code, promo 003, and apply for the uh, exam or apply for, first of all, the training with Becca. 
then go to exam directly. The exam is straightforward and it's easy exam really. And when you put it inside your CV, you will find many, many um, uh, opportunities opened for you. Yeah, for the exam, it's open exam, okay? Yes, the exam will be online, so it's good for you again. We reach this point, underlying competences. I told you at the beginning, we need to discuss the underlying competences. We need to discuss today as a business analyst inside the organization, what I need to have from skills point of view. Many underlying competences you need to understand and you need to judge, okay? And you need maybe to say, okay, I have this one, I don't have this one, I need to enhance myself in this area and so on. So we have six group of competences, okay? Analytical thinking and the problem solving, and we have different types of skills inside this one. Behavioral characteristic about ethics, personal accountability, and so on. You need to have this also skills. Business knowledge, like the knowledge of the domain that you work in case you are working for finance, in case you are working for a different, let's say, under a bank, then you have to know exactly what the bank um, uh, work, the services, and so on. If you worked for, let's say, uh, Ministry of Health, it's totally different story. So you need to search, do your uh, homework to understand exactly what they give. Communication skills, verbal, nonverbal, and so on. Interaction skills, how to work with a team, uh, conflict resolution, teaching your team in case you are a lead inside your team. Then the last one called tools and technologies, which actually the knowledge of working with different tools. So let's start with analytical thinking and the problem solving. Creative thinking, one part. The second one, decision making process, learning, problem solving, system thinking, conceptual thinking, visual thinking. Creative thinking about what? What do you think about creative thinking? Creative, creativity. Do you have that underlying competences, which is creativity? create new ideas, out of the box ideas. In this case, we call it creative thinking. If you have that one, then we call it out of the box ideas, then we can call it creative thinking. Decision making, do you have that one? Yes, exactly, think out of the box. Decision making, decision making about how you can take decisions, how you can recommend solution. In case you receive two requirements, one will, let's say, um, uh, enhance the system, the other one uh, that the business user or customers or stakeholders ask for it, it will break the system down or make a problem for the system, then you need to take the decision. Yes, you need to take the risk. You need to put alternative solutions. Um, you, you need to have your, let's say, decisions quickly, okay? Most of people, most of people, they don't have that one. Learning, it's also under analytical thinking. Today, for my experience, let's say, I work with different types of organization, different types of organization, okay? But learning give me the, um, uh, let's say, the, the good point among other people or among other BAs inside the organization because I opened the website for that organization. I, I tried the best to learn more about that organization, uh, thinking about what they have, what they don't have, the services. I, if I worked with the bank, I need to uh, learn about the bank system and so on. So this is called learning, okay? System thinking. System thinking. What do you think? What's the meaning of system thinking? It's a tricky one, by the way. System thinking. Mm -hmm. System thinking, this one. Yeah, this is the point. 
system thinking is not related to the systems. Let's say if we, if you put a system like, okay, um, ERB system, it's a system, right? Solution, but it's not like that. System thinking means that inside your organization, there is organizational chart. You need to understand it. There is list of services. You need to understand it. There is list of solutions, ERB solution, Oracle, Microsoft, etc. You need to understand how it works and what is the name of the systems inside the organization. You have many, many parts. One of you mentioned parts or factors inside the organization. You need to understand and connect all of these parts, system, Nidam in Arabic. Okay. So this is yeah, uh, the system thinking. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Conceptual thinking. Did you know if you reach, let's say, uh, organization, a company culture, yeah, under system thinking. Thank you, Rahaf, good point. Company culture, because sometimes it's not all about organizational charts. Sometimes the culture of the organization, communication is different. Conceptual thinking. If you go to build a new house, let's say, okay? Abstraction of ideas and proceeds. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Great, yeah. Conceptual thinking, if you go to uh, build a new house for the, any of the engineering uh, offices, the, first of all, maybe they will give you, let's say, a 3D plan or a 3D view for how the house will look like, let's say, and they can move it on the screen so you can see everything, okay? They call it concept model, something like that, okay? So the conceptual thinking, how you can understand the full uh, picture, how you can understand the, the, the simulation of that, yeah, something similar to prototype or simulation, okay? This is the conceptual thinking. But now, let's say, okay, uh, uh, Ahmad, thank you very much. Visual thinking is related how to transfer conceptual thinking, okay? into a drawing, something you can see it. But I will give you another example for this one also. For in case visual thinking, in case you are working with the stakeholder, let's say to collect a process, how HR employee will accept a new candidate making interview, a new candidate, a new interview. Okay. Then another interview, interview two. Then after that, there is something else, let's say um, uh, papers, documents, he need to apply, documents, many things else until taking approval, approval. Okay. Then after approval, you will hire that person, hire that employee as a new employee. Okay. This steps that I draw it here called visual thinking, exactly. If you have or has that skill, okay, to map the things or draw, thing, draw things on the screen or paper or whatever, then we call it visual thinking. You will put the idea in front of you. You can discuss it with your stakeholders, similar exactly what you can see in the screen now. Okay, similar, but it's visual. You can take it and throw it away after finishing the discussion with your stakeholders, okay? Uh, it's something high level. It's will not, you know, there is no one will come to you and visual thinking to ask you, I need a 100 person threaten here, okay? So you can use user stories, you can use a swim lane for visual thinking, whatever the technique that you will use, it comes under visual thinking. Okay. Okay, let me move now to the other one, which is the behavioral characteristics. Why as a BA, I need to have ethics? Why I need to have ethics? Why? Code of conduct? 
yes, to guide me to gain the trust of the stakeholders. The second one, trustworthiness, or the third one, okay. Not only limited to PAs, yes, exactly, because this one shared with anyone, as I told you, customer exposed confidential data with ethics, everything is disrupted without ethics, yes, exactly. Great, great. Okay. Do you have example of ethics? Yes, credibility. Example of ethics to prevent deviation, neutrality, honesty. Exactly, exactly. Actually, this part is the most important part with the business analyst. Maybe you will, you will not touch it directly. Okay, fairness, exactly. Sustainable in case it's ethical organization, exactly. But this one, you cannot touch it directly, okay, right? Maybe you have that ethics or all of you have that part. But again, how you can touch the ethics? In case I give you, let's say, uh, 100 requirements as a business owner, okay? We are business owner and I give the BA 100 requirements. But in this situation, okay, they shared with the management 99. Why? Because they can manipulate. By the way, the BA can do many things, okay, with the requirements. Can hide the requirements, can put it in a different way, so it can be removed and so on. So you need to have the ethics, okay, to give the 100 requirements inside the documents. This is one example. In this case, the business owner will trust you. So the second one will come directly, trustworthiness, okay? They will know that you, you has the personal accountability. In case we share with you something, you will try the best to finish it. This is the personal accountability. You are unaccountable, no cheating, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Transparent with the customer, yes, yes. Then the organization and time management, if you will ask me or you, you told me as a BA, you need nine days to finish the task, I will trust you. You will do everything in nine days. But after nine days, okay, if you come to me all the time, then what will happen? What will happen? You told me nine days, but after that you will come and let's say, ask me for another two days, for every single task, you'll do the same. Then there is no organizational time management. Okay, adaptability, which means in case today you work with the organization, okay, in a project, and they ask you to go with agility, okay, to take, let's say, 10 requirements each two weeks. But after that, they decide to go and Waterfall plan means that you need to collect all requirement, okay? After you move one month with this 10 requirements, they ask you to go to collect everything like this part. So adaptability means, yeah, you can move between different approaches. You adapt yourself with the customers. Uh, if you sit with a customer today with, uh, uh, with bad attitude, then you need to adapt yourself based on that. So many things actually comes under adaptability, okay? Maybe there will be conflict of interest with BA. Nobody will believe you. Yeah, all the time you need to, to uh, remove the, the, the points related uh, to trust. I mean, to lose the trust, you need to avoid it all the time, okay? Okay, business knowledge. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. Based on that, they will give you a time. Yes, exactly. Business knowledge, what do you think, business knowledge? You need to understand the business for the bank. If you are working in one of the banks, okay? If you are working, let's say, with, let's say, this one related to the bank, or in case you are uh, oil and gas industry, there is different types of businesses inside the uh, industry, okay? Uh, organizational knowledge means you need to understand how the organization chart work, okay? The level of the organization, okay? Uh, 
uh, what are the services of the organization? Solution knowledge means what exactly the solutions and the systems under that organization. If they use ERB, Oracle, Microsoft, whatever. Methodology knowledge means that you need to understand exactly did they follow methods or methodologies or a framework like ITIL, COPET 5 or 2019, uh, ISO, which type of frameworks they follow. Because if they follow one standard, then you can open that standard to understand exactly how the organization, the full picture will work. You know this one? Most of people, they forgot this part. They think that the information is already shared. Why I need to read it? When I need to enhance one of the system, I can open the requirements from the departments and that's it. No, you need to understand your domain. You need to understand the business how they get um, investment, how they uh, get, uh, let's say, more uh, profit, uh, how the organization chart and the organization culture affect that chart, what is the system and the methods, methodologies, frameworks that comes under the organization, because this one will save your time and you, you don't need to ask any any help from anyone about how I need to finish this task or that task and so on, okay? Verbal communication, nonverbal communication, written communication, listening. What's the difference between nonverbal communication and written communication? Verbal, like how I am talking now to you, okay? It's like that, verbal communication, the communication between me and you. But what about nonverbal communication and body language? Yeah, exactly. Body language, body language, exactly. The listening is different. This one is listening. Okay, we have a, a skill for listening. I need carefully to listen to you, to understand you, to give you the clarity then after you finish. Nonverbal communication, the body language, the written communication, it's emails, documents that you shared with the stakeholders, something written on the screen, like what I did now, reports and so on. Yeah, exactly, Salwa. PA should be a good listener, active listening. You need to hear. You need to give a time for your stakeholder to hear from them. Then you can give your feedback. Interaction skills, okay? Interaction skills, facilitation, how you can make everything easy for your stakeholders, for your team members, leadership and influencing, you know about it. Teamwork, you can work with the team or not. I'm 100% sure that most of the time you will uh, have many challenges while you are working with the team because you need someone to manage a team all the time. As a BA in all projects, please ask to be as a lead inside the project with other BAs or you need a leader. You need to have a leader in case you have team members from BA team, I mean. Negotiation and conflict resolution in case you have any conflict with your team or has any issue with the stakeholders and so on. So you need to enhance this part in case you uh, receive something teaching how to teach your team or stakeholders about a new knowledge, a new system, uh, how to finish tasks and so on. Tools and technology, office productivity tools, business analysis tools and technology, and the third one, communication tools and technology. Give me example for office, one example. Office productivity tools and technologies. MS Office, Word, yeah, Dashboard, Microsoft, Task Management, Google Workspace, no, PowerPoint, yes, Trello, GDT, BBU, BBT, Excel, okay, Outlook, okay, Visio, okay, SharePoint, yeah, could be Microsoft Project, mm -hmm. SQL, tab, okay. Office productivity and tools. Office productivity means any 
tool that you will use it for documenting something like Visio, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, uh, sorry, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, something like that, Excel sheets and so on. The other things that you shared, okay, related to communication tools and technology, like WhatsApp, like Slack, whatever, anything for communication, you can put it under communication tools and technology. The third one, which is business analysis tools and technology that used to manage your activity, like Jira. You know Jira? Salesforce, yes, yeah, SAP, no, Tableau, Zoom, Mir, Mira. Okay, wait, Zoom comes under communication tools. We have something called Miro, which is this one. I hope that you will see it on the screen. Miro, this tool, can you see it on the screen? Yes, exactly, this one. You can use this one under the business analysis tools and communication, Miro. It's about how to manage the requirements, how to analyze the requirements like SQL and others. Many, many, many of the tools that you just mentioned comes under this one, okay? Which is the business analysis tools and technologies, okay? It comes here. The communication for communication, office of productivity for working, documenting, and so on. The business analysis tools related how to analyze the requirements, save the requirements, manage the requirements, and so on. Yeah, you can use Fishbone and Miro and many others, by the way. Now the knowledge areas, okay, quickly. I will not take much time because really this is the core of the ECPA. As I told you, you will have four knowledge areas for the ECPA, planning and monitoring, okay, requirement lifecycle management, elicitation, and a requirement or business analysis design and definition, okay? So four knowledge areas, the first one called business analysis and planning and monitoring, you have under each one different tasks, okay? For the first one, which is the business analysis, the planning and monitoring. If you remember at the beginning of our webinar today, we start with the business analysis and approach. Sorry. We start with this one, then a plan stakeholder engagement, a plan business analysis governance, plan uh, business analysis information management, identify business analysis performance improvement. For each task of those, when you start with this task, let's say plan business analysis approach, you need to decide, okay? You will go with agile, means adaptable approach, or you will go with a predictable approach. For adaptive like agile and so on, predictable like waterfall. So for each one of those, you need to decide. The task here inside the ACPA means that you need to decide now before the project start, okay? So your output will be business analysis approach, okay? A plan stakeholder engagement, you need to say, okay, I need X, Y, Z. I need Hajir, Amira, Muayyad, Tom, X, Ahmed, Y, Z with me in this project. I need to collect the requirement from them and I need to communicate them each week in a weekly basis to get the requirement, then on weekly basis to share with them the status, okay? I will call them by phone or Zoom or whatever the communication, or I need to sit with them face to face. So everything that I mentioned here called plan stakeholder engagement. So this is the output, stakeholder engagement approach. A plan business analysis governance, governance means, okay, today, uh in case there is any change happen while i'm collecting the requirement who will approve that one do i need to accept that change okay so this is the task that called governance approach 
Business analysis information management means where you remember the, 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 the list of the tools for business analysis, like Miro, like Jira, whatever. You need to decide which tool that you will use at the beginning of your project. Okay, so this one called information management approach. Identify business analysis performance improvement. Imagine that you finish your work, okay? But after you finish that one or your team finished their work, they did it within 30 days. But you ask them at the beginning with the 20 days. Exactly, measuring and KPIs, we call it. When you at the beginning start the project, you ask your team, you need to finish it within 20 days. This we call it measures and KPIs. If they finish it with 30 days, meaning there is a gap between the baseline or the target and the achieved one, okay? So the difference 10 days. So you will ask yourself, where is the problem? Is it with our BA team? Is it with a stakeholder? Where exactly? So this is actually the list of the task that in case you submit your exam or submit for the training and the exam, you will do it under this knowledge area, okay? But again, there is something here. Yeah, exactly, baseline. For the inputs, can I start my project and mention that I need Mu'ayyad and X and Y and Z in case I don't know what is the project about? Can you? Yes. So you need to have something called need as an input. Exactly. Exactly. And for setting those 20 and 30 days, you need the performance objective. Okay, performance objective. But why they put external here? I need to know. Why they put it external? Okay, you almost touch it. External means that it's not under BA activities, okay? The performance objective, because this one related to HR. If you ask about what is your, let's say, uh, uh, objective for this year, each employee, employee inside the organization, they will send their, let's say, objective for each year, okay? So this one comes based on the HR, let's say, forms that mention the objective of that employee. This is why we call it external. It means even if it's not coming from HR, it should be come from your manager, not as, let's say, um, uh, a task of the business analyst to mention that you need 20 days or 30 days or whatever. Yes, you need to put it, but it comes from the management saying or mentioned there that this is the objective for you. This is why we call it objective, okay? Yes, roadmap for the year from functional departments. Yes, not in your area of influence. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Not our out of my specialty. Great. So this is the knowledge area, which is rela which related to um, uh, planning, elicitation, and collaboration. Elicitation and collaboration. Inside this knowledge area, you have five tasks, okay? You have five tasks, okay? You prepare for elicitation. Then conduct elicitation, then confirm elicitation results, okay? communicate business analysis information, and finally manage stakeholder collaboration, okay? So for prepare for elicitation means, okay, this task, which is elicitation and collaboration talked about one single thing, okay? You need to sit with the stakeholders, 
okay you need to hear from them and you need to get the requirements and share it again with everyone in one document right okay but again you need to understand the following you need to understand the following for each task that comes under this knowledge area because we are structured yeah exactly elicitation it's about gathering the requirement from stakeholder okay but elicitation why they put it elicitation because you need to capture it you need to make a huge discussion to capture the requirements okay so the elicitation means the time to set a meeting with your stakeholder to collect the requirement this is called elicitation okay that's it it's the discussion to collect and gather the requirements from the stakeholder okay yes exactly okay so the point here for elicitation that first of all they put it in five different tasks you need first of all to prepare yourself you are the ba okay and there are three stakeholders okay from department x in order to set a meeting with them you need to start to prepare for elicitation okay when you will set the time location you will meet them online or you need to 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 have it over zoom microsoft uh, office let's say teams microsoft teams whatever you need whiteboard you need uh, pen whatever okay so prepare the questions also for the interview whatever you need you need to decide here okay for this task then you will go to uh, set the meeting you will sit with them we call it conduct the meeting in this task here you will start the discussion with them online or face to face whatever this is the second task the third one it's about confirm the elicitation result because after you finish the meeting you will collect requirements right you will take this requirement and you will discuss it with your manager so we call it confirm elicitation results after you confirm it with your team or with the stakeholders or whatever, then you need to communicate the business analyst information means that you will share again the documents with the stakeholders. After that, the last task, you need to manage a stakeholder collaboration. This task, you will say, okay, we have a stakeholder one, a stakeholder two, a stakeholder three. You will say in major stakeholder collaboration, okay, stakeholder one, support me. Stakeholder two, support me. Stakeholder three, no, there is no support. There is an attitude and so on. So in the other projects, you will exclude this stakeholder. Okay. Yes, Jir, share the minutes of meeting and so on. Okay. So this is about the elicitation. Yes, Saatif, but does the elicitation? Yeah, please complete your question, uh, Atif. Yes, 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 exactly. Yes, Ahmed. Why we need the elicitation? By the way, most of your work about elicitation, but maybe the first time that you hear about the elicitation as a terminology, because Papo comes to put the standards. You need to know about that. I am 100% sure all of you here, okay? You did this task before, but you cannot imagine that we call it elicitation and it's a structure to start from a preparation and there is a step-by-step -step how you will prepare. Then you will conduct that one, then you will confirm it, then you need to communicate, then you will manage a stakeholder. And mostly most people, they miss this part, confirm elicitation and manage stakeholder collaboration. They conduct elicitation and they share the documents directly, okay? So you need, first of all, to confirm with your team that you can do those requirements and you need to manage the stakeholders. Not all the time you will exclude, by the way, it's just an example. Maybe you'll exclude him. Maybe you will just put a note in the Excel sheet about this user that he will not support in the future and so on. It's just an example that we need to exclude, but mostly we did not exclude them. Okay. 
Yeah, requirement life cycle management. Requirement life cycle management. Okay. Imagine, imagine, imagine that you will receive a requirement, okay, from stakeholders. Okay, this department, HR department, okay. They ask you, okay, that you will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight requirements, okay? One of them about login page. They ask you, we need login page, which is include username and password, okay? After one year, other department, financial department, they need a system and they need the login page, okay? Login page, but after, yani, there is one year or three years, let's say, between this requirement and this requirement. The financial team asked you to add login page with username and password and face recognition because there is a new functionality and so on. So in this way, we need to have a, a situation or location or something, Excel sheet or storage to put our requirements there. This is why we call this task requirement lifecycle management because we need to save this login requirement and we need all the time to trace it, to maintain it, to prioritize it. The trace it means that we need to put the requirement all the time and we can see the relation between this requirement and other requirements, okay? The maintain requirement means where we have any updates on that requirement, we need to add it, we need to update it. So in case after three years, I don't have the old one. So I need to create a document for everything from username, password and face recognition. But in case I have it before, then I just need to maintain it by adding the face, uh, face recognition. This is called maintain requirement. The third one, which is related to prioritize the requirement. Okay, in your project, you will take it in three phases or three iteration. In this situation, how you will prioritize your requirement based on the risk, based on the value, based on the time, uh, based on many criteria, then you need to put your yes cost value Many things, based on those, you can put the prioritization. So this is a part. And also assets requirement change, okay? Which means in case if you receive anything related to this requirement, okay, then you will enhance it and you will add the requirements after approval or after if there is no effect for that one or no, let's say impact on that one in your organization, then you can give a recommendation that we can accept that change. Finally, after you accept that change, you need to share it with the different organization members, let's say your manager, whatever, to approve the requirements, okay? This is the point here that we needed from this part, okay? It's about requirement design, proposed change requirement. Those are the tasks under this knowledge area. Finally, you need to have a space, a storage that include all requirements, okay? Then you can trace it, maintain it, prioritize it, assess requirement change and approve the requirements. Requirement analysis and design definition, it's about the following. Did you hear before about SRS or BRD. What the meaning of PRS of SRS? If you can put it on the chat. System requirement specification, yes. Or software requirement specification, yes. This is the SRS. Business requirement document, business requirement design, okay. 
The first one, system requirement specification or solution requirement specification or software solution uh, requirement specification, SRS. The other one, business requirement document, or sometimes they call it business requirement specification. We build a document, okay? We put the requirements inside that uh, document that I collected from the stakeholders. If you open the website, open now in your Google and put IEEE, let's say, SRS template. IEEE SRS template. Can you see the screen? Just put IEEE SRS template. When you click search, just to click on the first one, this one. Okay, software requirement specification. By the way, this is a standard, so uh, you can click on it. This is the download link, okay. Okay, then it will open for you. Software requirement specification. This is the template, by the way. Yeah, by the way, this one, software requirement specification include post. You can consider it. I will let you know exactly what happened here. This is the template itself. Yeah, you can build your projects for the your university on this template, by the way. In case you uh, need to do some projects, you know, for each class or um, uh, material that you have, you need to uh, have, let's say, a project for it, then you need to use this one. You can put it for your, let's say, introduction about your project, uh, document convention, uh, audience, scope, references, description about your product or a project, operation, uh, external interfaces in case there is integration, system features, you will list every single feature inside the system here, and the other non-functional requirements like performance, safety, security, and so on. If you go down for this template, for each part that I told you here from the table of content, you will find a description. Look here for the purpose, let's say, identify the product whose software requirements are specified in this document, including revision. They give you exactly what you need to put inside it, okay, for each part. So it's really a great uh, document. You can refer to it, it will help you a lot, okay? So now this template, you need to build it here. So you need to specify a model requirement. When I put system specification, I need to put exactly the user story, use cases, and so on. So when I design it, I need to put as a user story or use cases, okay? Or different, different uh, type of feature based on that. Then you need to verify the requirement. Then you need to validate the requirement. What's the difference between verify and validate? What do you think? Verify with what, validate with what? You will verify the requirement with what or based on what? Thank you very much, Ahmed. Again, it's the standard and the criteria. This is the verification. Like if it's a clear, this is, we call it verification. If it's direct, we call it verification. If your requirement is straightforward, not uh, or fully completed, you did not for, forget, let's say something, we call it verify with a quality standard. Exactly, Hajir. What about validate requirements? Yes, exactly. Validation means you need to compare your requirement if satisfy the objective or customer need or stakeholder need or the need itself or the objective of the project. So the verify related to quality here and validate related to business objective, okay? So this one meet standards, yes or no. This one related to if your requirements satisfy the need of your stakeholders, okay? 
Define requirements architecture means that you need to build an architecture for all of the requirements, how it connected each together. What is the viewpoints? If you remember, one of you mentioned viewpoints or perspective. Means if you look on you, the system, ERB system, let's say, as employee, normal employee, not HR, it's different from HR employee. Each one will see something else, okay? So this is the redefined requirements architecture. Yes, Ahmed Ayad stakeholder meet this one. Standard, this one, okay? Define design options in case, let's say you have different options. Let's say ready system, uh, internal development system, or mix between both. Then you need to decide, I will put the requirement with Oracle company to help me, or I will share it with my internal team to develop it, or I will mix between both. Make by reuse analysis. Make by reuse. It's a part of okay uh, the current. So you will put it like make internally buy from other. We call it purchase. Uh, the third one mix between make and buy. Ahmed, thank you very much. Analyze potential value and recommended solution in case you will go with a make or buy, purchase or internal development or mix between both. Then in this one, you need to decide. Here you will give the options. And in this task, you will say, okay, I need this option and this option, and this is the impact. We call it solution development options or mix between both, between solution and development. Okay. We received two questions. If I'm going to change my career path after taking ECP exam and I am holding bachelor degree in management, what are the options for me, types of jobs I could apply for? Okay. By the way, you are on the right side. You will not shift your career path or change your career path if you are working in management because the business analyst uh, can work in the strategy departments, okay, can work in different departments related to uh, management. Uh, so yeah, no need to, to, to change your career path. The titles could be a business process analyst, could be a business analyst direct working under strategy department. Uh, um, uh, sometimes we, we put some other titles like specialist, okay, process specialist or system specialist, but only management. You will not work there as a technical uh, work, okay? How business analysis helps communication and network technic technician? Yeah, Ali. Um, for sure, it will help you. How you'll communicate the requirements, uh, the tasks that comes from your stakeholders in, care, in case there is an issue. Here today, we'll see some other uh, techniques that uh, will help us like uh, uh, fishbone analysis uh, and those stuff to recommend the solution and share it with other people. So yes, exactly. It's for you to, to uh, select what is uh, the option that you will go with, okay? Uh, focused on IT is business analyst skill focused on the IT exact no no at all uh, it's as again uh, maybe the example we give you two examples in IT and the other examples in business processes HR but it's a mix you are working maybe in an organization in IT domain or in a different totally domain like HR processes that I mentioned it's not an IT Okay, but yes, you can work under an IT, you can work in a business departments. Okay, so no need to, to go with the certificate uh, just if you are IT. No, in all, in all cases, you can go with. We reached the techniques, which is the, the good part that you will like. Okay, 
So we have a question here regarding the um, uh, suggestion or recommendation for the certificates. Uh, yes, you can go with the project management, you can go with the ACPA, you can go with the product management if you are a mechanical engineer. Uh, those three will help you a lot, okay? So certified business analyst is a professional, uh, ECPA, and also you will have uh, the um, uh, project management and also product management. Those three certificates will help you a lot, Moad. Should I have with ACPA direct or CPAP directly? It's up to you, but you can go directly with anyone. There is no recommendation that comes from, the only recommendation based on the years of experience. Uh, if you have, let's say, more than four or five years of experience, you can go with the CPAP. Uh, you need to study it carefully. But um, no issue if you can go with the ECPA, then you can go with the CPAP. There is no, let's say, uh, rules prevent you to go with the CPAP directly. Okay, Muhammad. But you need the only thing about the experience itself. Okay. The techniques. Okay, we have different techniques, actually, you will use it. Okay, something called product pack log or pack log management means the, the list of the things that you receive or the stories or the requirements that you received from the uh, stakeholders, you need to list it down. Okay, means that you will have, let's say, a list of all the requirements, then you will put the estimation, then you will put the priority, then maybe you will add another column like, uh, who requested or who did request it before or the owner of that requirement. This, you can put, put it like a table inside the Excel sheet. You can record everything in, in, inside this uh, backlog, but really it's a good, a good uh, thing that you need to, 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 to have it in your desktop, okay? Start your day by creating this type of backlog management. You can call it action plan, but the exact name called backlog because the main ID or the main column will be the story, okay? Based on the story, you can list everything else and it will be saved for you until or with you until the end of your project, okay? So simply, yes, you can consider it like that. Benchmark it. Benchmarking and market analysis. You have two things here, either to benchmark your organization or your project with other similar project or organization. If you are working with Ministry of Education, then you compare yourself with other Ministry of Education in different country. Or in case market analysis, you need, because this is the difference between benchmarking and market analysis, then you need to compare the market analysis or your organization with the full market. Let's say, uh, Ministry of Education will compare itself with other ministries, regardless the type. They will see how they take the benefits, how they deal with their customers, uh, number of stars they uh, got based on the uh, customer experience, uh, customer satisfaction, and so on. Um, so based on that, you can uh, do something called market analysis, because let's say in Amazon, they need to study the full market. In case they need to go with the benchmarking, they will compare Amazon and noon.com, okay, and sukh.com, something like that. In market analysis, they will study the market. They will compare Amazon, let's say, with malls, with uh, uh, big supermarkets, and so on. So this is the one, the decision modeling. Decision modeling means how you will do or take a decision based on what? In our example here, you can see in case, this is a bank example, in case the, uh, the amount of, let's say, um, uh, eligibility, we call it, less than 1,000 dirham, let's say, or dollar, then it will be based on the age. In case age more than 18 years old, he is eligible. In case he less than 18, he is ineligible. Between 1,000, 2,000 based on age, in case it's more than 21, he is eligible and so on. To more than $2,000, then you will go with the age 25. Okay, so in case more than 25, he is eligible, less than 25, he is ineligible. This is maybe you know, to help you 
to uh, give you uh, uh, a chart how you'll go with the decision, okay? It's simplify the decision. If you put it in your desktop, let's say if you are working inside or with a bank and put it, this will help you a lot to go and compare it and give the decision based on it. Brainstorming, yes, it's called decision tree. Decision tree, yeah. For brainstorming sessions, actually, you know, brainstorming, we have the brainstorming, why? We need to have new ideas, right? We need to have new ideas. But brainstorming session is different from the interview or other types or meetings because this one, we need to have new ideas. It's about the creative thinking, okay? Out of the box ideas. So to prepare for a brainstorming, put in your mind, avoid to bring employees, managers in that meeting because we don't need from the managers to stop the employees from giving the ideas, okay? This is the first thing. The second thing, there is a step-by-step. -step. First of all, you need to prepare. You need to define the area. What is the discussion point? You need to put a time, let's say, tomorrow from 11 to 12. A list of stakeholders. Establish evaluation criteria like uh, the survey that you receive it on the chat. This is brainstorming. Then you will start the session. All people will open the mic and share ideas. Some of us will record those ideas. Then we need to put each idea together to say, okay, what do you think if we go with this idea or this idea or this idea? The third one we call it wrap up means we need to evaluate each idea. Then we will put a list. This one we will accept. This one we will not accept and the rating ideas, then we will share those ideas with all stakeholders, okay? Yes, yes, exactly, voila. Affinity diagram or survey. The interviews, it's different. Interview, it's a systematic approach. Already I prepare a list of the questions and I will sit with the other one and start asking the question. Based on that the questions, I will receive answers and I will put it beside each question, okay? Like job interviews, they have list of the questions and they will ask you that questions. Based on that, they will receive different answers and then they will evaluate you. Focus group. Focus group, it's like a meeting. Okay, you are here and you will have, or you will have different stakeholders with you. But for focus groups, okay, those stakeholders will be specialists. They are, from the domain that you will ask the questions, okay? Let's say you are need some ideas related to how to enhance a profit. So mostly you will ask people from finance departments, okay, to come to this meeting. The difference between this one and the brainstorming session, that one you don't need to bring the specialist for this meeting. But for focus group, you need to recommend to have or to have the, those specialists with you in that meeting. We have something called workshop, okay? Yes, Hassan, yeah, yeah, exactly. Different theories about that, but mostly yes, around it. Workshops bring a stakeholder together in area and you will make it open. Every people inside that workshop will collaborate. Maybe it will be like an open discussion. But finally, you will put an idea. You will ask all stakeholders how I can reach this idea. Okay? We call it workshop. Functional decomposition, which means that we have function here, like, let's say, a new system. This system, it's an example. This system include, let's say, Function one, function two, or sub-function one, sub-function two. Let's say here, Amazon. Here, let's say supermarket. Here, the other items like uh, electronics. 
under supermarket you have process one process two and so on and there is different activities we call it for, yes wps work breakdown structure but this one not related to the activities it's mostly related to the functions then the activities for each function okay so yes it's similar or work packages yes exactly then we have something called kpis you remember when we just put baseline for the BA to finish 20, uh, to finish the work within 20 days, but he finished it with 30 days. So there is extra 10 days. So this one, we call it KPIs. We put the measures to, okay, analyze the key performance indicators about this PA. And also we have something called SMART. Did you have any idea about SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely manner? When you put any goal for or goals for any person or for the organization, we need to make sure that this goal specific means I give him exactly what I need. Specifically, I mentioned you need to finish it, let's say X, Y, Z. Yes, exactly. Measurable, I need to put numbers so I can measure it. Achievable, you will not put like you will finish the task within two days and it's need 30 days. So you need to make it achievable. Yes, exactly, exactly. You need exactly to put a full statement that include all of these five or those five factors. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, you will not uh, mention something from moon. Let's say we'll do the training over uh, visit the moon and do the training there. And timely manner, you will say and put the time within three years, two years, one year, and so on. So as an example, include all of these okay factors. So what Hassan mentioned on the chat, we can call it goal, okay? specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely manner. Business model canvas. Yeah, most of the organization, they use it to build their um, um, business uh, model and they can share it with the people. Uh, so anyone can read it, can understand exactly what this business talked about. Like K part, yeah, you need to put inside each box of those the uh, exactly needed information about that company. In case you are uh, talking about Apple, you yes, it's visual tool to uh, put all ideas like key partnership with whom the Apple did a partnership, the key activities that uh, Apple will did, key resources, value proposition, customer relationship, numbers, channel of the services, online visit, and so on, customer segments. Did they target, let's say, um, uh, different countries or type of people and so on, cost structure and revenue stream from where they will receive revenue or a profit. Not used a lot, but if you can search Google now, I'll search Google, I'll give you a quick example for this one. For this one, you can search it, okay, for let's say Amazon or any company, just put business model canvas for any company. Okay, for Amazon, okay, you can see this one or this one, open it. I need one clear so it can we can use it. The key partners, you will see the list of the partners, the cost structure from where they get the cost or what is the cost structure from where they will get the revenue, value proposition, <clears throat> channels, desktop, mobile application, and so on. Okay, we'll have maybe something clear so you can see it like this one. This is example. But this one, it's really will help you to understand quickly the business of that organization. We have something also called root cause analysis in case there is any issue happen to your organization, okay? Or with one of the, let's say, technical team. Go and ask him five why. 
why 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 we call it ishikawa analysis or fishbone diagram this one okay this one the fishbone diagram we call it ishikawa yes voila for the why let's start with five why ask him why the system goes down okay he will answer you maybe because uh, there is no power why we don't have power he will tell you let's say because we uh, receive a lot of the traffic and this the power supply goes down why we receive a lot of the traffic he will ask you because we uh, received an attack from uh, let's say country x this one which is the the fifth one will give you the answer why the system goes down answer any uh, or ask anyone about the issue by five why five times really you will receive the exact reason behind that or the cause behind that problem ishikawa or fishbone diagram it's similar but this one you will categorize everything why the system goes down category one because of the network category two because of the power supply category three because of the attack or security category four let's say because of a human factor why because of the network maybe you will put small answers because the network is not stable we take from mobile uh, less than expected and so on for security you will put also different reasons for uh, human factor the person who is responsible for the servers uh, left today early or morning whatever so yeah this one will give you clarity about the root cause of the problem. Kids all the time ask hundred of why, not only five, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is really something good. Maybe they take it from the kids, by the way. Survey and questionnaire, you know about survey. This is that you received uh, many times from the training support team about where is the issue and so on. Maybe you receive a survey asking you many questions about X, Y, Z, but this one, uh, you can collect the requirement. If you has a good knowledge about it, you will receive uh, a good question. So if you know exactly the requirements, then share a survey. But if you uh, don't have that knowledge, then you need to set uh, a meeting with your stakeholder to understand exactly what you need from them. SWOT analysis, most of you heard about it before, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But here I need to uh, just uh, focus on the following thing. A strength, a strength and weaknesses comes from in, or from uh, internal, uh, I mean from the internal team or internal uh, factors inside the organization. Let's say your strength uh, from where, okay, you are the first company to uh, that include 200 uh, employees, professional employees. Uh, weaknesses also internally it means your team uh, don't have uh, knowledge um, in business analysis, let's say. External, let's say in the market, there is an opportunity to do something to increase the revenue. The threats means there is another competitor, noon.com, they will uh, stop our work in case they uh, keep working like that. So threats, opportunities outside organization. Non-functional requirement, we put it inside the requirement documents, but this one, if you don't, has that knowledge, technical knowledge, you can ask your team to provide you with this requirements, like availability. They will provide you the technical team that the system need to be uh, work and running 24 hours by seven days. Uh, security, the system should sec be secure or must be secured from uh, external hacking. All of these requirements con considered as a non-functional requirement or non-functional requirement analysis. Do you need all the time to put it? Not all the time, just ask your team members and stakeholders. Business case that I told you at the beginning, yes, safety, healthy, and so on. Business case, you need to put exactly the risk, 
ROI, return of investment, strategic L or uh, business opportunity, like our situation, what is the value of this project, the sponsor of this project, uh, who will approve the project, small plan or high level plan for this project, uh, the fund for this project, many things. All of this information could start before even the project start. Based on this one, we can decide we'll go this project or not, but this one will give you clarity about the case of this project. We will go with the, this project to enhance HR processes or not. Then fill this template, it will give you a clarity how you will uh, enhance the level of your organization, uh, let's say, uh, projects or initiatives even. Observation, did you hear about observation before? What do you think about observation? From this image, by the way, you can take the full picture. Just watch, audit, yes, exactly. Watching business environment, monitoring, exactly, exactly, exactly. This is observation, yes, yes, exactly, yes focus yes it's like there is someone or employee is working on the laptop and you will work in his shoulder just to see how he accept the request from employees or from customers sorry how he finish uh, the work and so on based on that you will take this one and go ahead to write your requirement straightforward most analysis or most prioritization or also follow up with the work progress, yes. Prioritization, MOSCO analysis. MOSCO means must have, should have, could have, will not have. If I shared with you, okay. Yes, Hassan, exactly. Do not interfere his job. For MOSCO analysis, if I give you a requirement, I need, uh, let's say, um, uh, to accept new employees without interviews, okay? Without any interview, I need just to uh, collect CVs based on the title inside the CV, I will accept of that uh, person, okay? Then you will decide or prioritize this requirement, okay? It's must have or should have, could have, will not have. Okay, based on what you will do that, based on the cost, based on the risk, based on uh, uh, importance of that requirements and so on. Must have means that this requirement, the system or the solution or the function will not work at all without it. So we will give it M. M means must have. So this one, we will consider it inside our project. Yes, we have to provide the requirements a must. Yes, exactly. In case should have requirement important for a project, but not necessary, okay, which call it should. So it's important for the project, it will give us a value, but still it's not necessary, the system will work. Could have the requirement are nice to have, but have a much smaller impact when left out of the project. We call it C, could have means in case we remove it from the project, no need for it, okay? But in case we have it, nice to have it. It's good for us, but it will not impact at all the project. Will not have means it will not, the requirement that have been recognized as a not priority for a project at all. There is no project in case it's there or not, there is no value for this requirement and we can put it in a different project. Yes, Amira, I think it's important for all of you to, to submit the uh, evaluation, please. Yes, Hajir, it can be delayed. The won't have means delayed, yes. And the last one about user stories, which is how we can save our requirement. I'll give you an example. In case of the login page, that I asked you at the beginning about username and password, and this is the login button. Yes, we can use it in agile a lot, okay? 
we can put here login a priority let's say m must estimated time two working days okay as here description of the user customer i want here you need to put the functionality to put username and password etc so that you need to put the benefit here so that i can log into the system on my dashboard okay this is your benefit then you will need in this box to put the acceptance criteria, how the things began, when, and after that, what will happen. Let's say after you put username and password, there is complex password need to be written here. Then after that, you will click on this button, login button. After that, you will put that outcome of the taking action. You will see the dashboard here. Acceptance criteria to make sure that the developed functionality exact related to what the customer need here. Okay, so the quality team will work a lot in this box and this one with the business user or the business owner. So thank you very much again for all of you to attend this webinar.